All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays, and today we're going to be doing a, a road toast to Lost Groom in Dev Guy Slash Review and a showcase. So, this guy is actually very, very amazing. Like, if you look at the reviews, I think the reviews were pretty low. Um, well, I guess they worked out now, but yeah, they are they were people were re review bombing him. <laughs> so, road toast was getting review bombed, but now his reviews are uh, high. And I think they should even be higher than this. This like this arena offense should be a five. Well, uh, yeah, we're not at that point yet. So Rotos is actually so good. If you guys are actually able to uh, get Rotos, this guy is amazing, man. Hopefully, Plarium does not nerf him, but he's way too good. Like, I'll show you guys. Like, my build is not even like perfect. It's like not even close to being perfect. And this guy just puts in the work, man. So look, let's take a look at his skills to see if he, if he is worth booking. I did max him out in terms of books because I want him to do more damage. His basic ability does not need to be booked. It's only plus 5% damage uh, per level. Five levels. He attacks one enemy, basically, and he has a 75% chance of placing a decreased defense debuff for two turns. That doesn't really matter, man. Who cares about his decreased defense? But what's crazy about it is he has a 30% chance of granting an extra turn. So when I first saw this guy, I automatically thought I got to build this guy with a relentless set, which I actually did. But um, that's not mandatory. You don't need to have a relentless set on him. You can use cruel sets and whatnot. We'll get we'll get to the artifacts later. Uh, Vitality Plunder. This ability is very very powerful. Look at this man. This build, ability is basically like up almost 100 percent uptime. He attacks one enemy and decreases the target's max HP by 20 percent, which is crazy for arena. And then he adds that HP to his own max HP. You cannot decrease a single champion's max HP by more than 60 percent in one battle, and you cannot increase his max HP by more than 60,000. So if you, if, a, if you're one of your DPSers actually has over 60,000 HP, which is what he will have in uh, longer fights. I mean, it's quickly scales because he keeps going, right? So that's actually amazing, man. It's going to be hard for people to kill him and he's going to be dishing out a lot of damage. So power creep has arrived and he does not increase bosses max. Not doesn't, he doesn't decrease boss max HP. But he does increase his own HP by 15,000 when the skill is used against bosses. So it is pretty crazy. It is worth booking as well because he does 10% per level for four levels or three levels here because the level one doesn't count. And a cooldown minus one, which is very important. And his damage is based on attack and HP. So yeah, as he is increasing his HP, he's dealing dishing out more damage over time. So that is crazy, man. Like that word cannot express how strong this guy is, man. Uh, Faded Destruction. This ability is so powerful. He attacks one enemy and he ignores 75% of the target's defense. So it also ignores unkillable and block damage buffs. So you can uh, get rid of those pesky skull crowns. You can kill Torm in the cold because he, if he kills an enemy with this ability, they cannot be revived. And yeah, the levels are worth getting because it's 10% damage as opposed to 5 per level. And it's cooldown minus 1, which is very good to get. And thankfully, his passive ability... Oh, I forgot to mention that he gets himself an extra turn if his attack kills an enemy, so it is crazy. Thankfully, his passive does not need any books, so he decreases damage from a single enemy hit so that incoming damage will not exceed 50% of the champion's max HP from that hit, so he basically can't be one-shotted. Uh, can occur once per enemy attack, and he grants an extra turn if his damage reduction occurs. I think this part might actually be glitched, because sometimes he doesn't get the extra turn. I haven't noticed it that much. And it doesn't work against bosses, but he decreases the damage taken from bosses by 15%. And then if Siffy is on his team, it says by 30, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's 30%. If Siffy, the Lost Bride is on the same team as him. So Siffy and T Rotos are unbelievable together. I actually fought a team with them and I couldn't do anything. Even my own Rotos. So yeah, this guy is crazy good just by looking at his skills. And let's look at the way that I built him. I'll show you guys. And I'll show you guys, an I'll tell you guys an alternative way to build him. So yeah, I went with the one set of Relentless. So with Relentless, you're going to need four pieces to make one set. And you get an 18% chance to get an extra turn. So already has that, he already has that built in into his basic attack where he has a 30% chance. But his basic attack does not deal as much damage as his A2 and his A3 ability. So it's great to have this because you can just kill an enemy with his A2 sometimes. Or just use his A2 and then he grabs himself an extra turn and he'll be dishing out tons of damage. So Relentless is the optimal build for him. Uh, if you have the proper substats and main stats, things like that, as long as you got the total stats properly. And I used um, Immortal set. So most people actually use speed or or uh, crit damage, things like that. I use with Immortal because I want to have more HP and every turn that he takes, he heals himself by 
and he takes a lot of turns. So when he has a little bit of HP, he's going to be covering that health fast the more turns that he gets. So he's a crazy champion. I don't know how many times I've used the word crazy with this guy. <laughs> it's warranted for this guy, man. All right, let's look at the substats. So substats you're going to be looking for for, the, for uh, Roto's Lost uh, Bride. Bruh. So they call him a bride. <laughs> Roto's the Lost Groom. What you're going to be looking for is um, you're going to need crit damage. You're going to need high crit damage, high crit rate. Um, attack percentage, HP percentage, speed, like almost everything. Um, it will be war listed uh, in the infographic. Let's take a look at my substats here. Crit rate here. Uh, crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage primary, and speed boots. So if you're an end game, you can probably get away with running attack percentage primary on your boots and getting some high rolls on speed. You can probably get away with that. That is what one of my uh, buddies was telling me that he runs him with attack percentage, but he has like he has a relentless set and he's able to get him to over over 4k attack, <laughs> um, bunch of eight speed. I don't know how much speed he had him at. I think he had him at like 190 or something like that. And then his HP was over 30k, so I think it was like four, close to 40k HP. So he had crazy amount of stats. Uh, I don't I do not have these artifacts, so I couldn't do it. But yeah, so you're gonna want to go for speed if you can't. Um, attack percentage primary and crit damage over here. So try to get your crit rate from the substats. And for the ring, so the cool thing about the rings is the HP primary is the way to go with him because you get flat uh, boosts if you max it out. So you get 3480 HP and add it on top of him. He does more damage based on HP. And also try to look for the substats as well. So we've got HP percentage and attack percentage right here. And obviously we want the crit damage primary um, amulet. And I try to get some resistance on him because I want him to be able to resist resist some debuffs in, in case he needs to do it. And we want the HP primary banner. In the beginning, I had a resistance. But since I have Duchess, yeah, she's able to place block debuffs before he even gets a turn. That's the reason why I'm running HP primary. And I also got lots of speed on it. So if you do not have a Duchess, try to build him with a resistance as the banner. Just so that he's able to take his turns. Let's take a look at my total stats. So I have 3,365 attack. I was looking to build him over for for over 4k. I wasn't able to do that with Relentless, but I'm not switching him on my mastery. So if you guys want to switch it out, uh, if you don't have good Relentless pieces, I would actually advise doing so. Go for Cruel sets and crit damage. If unless you have Savage sets that are um, are very good, like optimal substats. Health points 30k, not bad. But I am using an Immortal set. The other guy was not using any HP sets, and then he was able to hit um, almost 40k. In health points and an old 4k attack 2180 defense not bad 173 speed again i have turn meter boosters um and yeah his speed is not that bad for arena crit raise 88 percent i would prefer if that was 100 percent, but i couldn't do it 214 percent crit damage i would prefer if that was higher closer to 300 percent and resistance 134 i used to have that over 200 and accuracy is 123 if you want to land that decreased defense so for masteries i want down to get helm smasher wait you if you want to use them for clan boss you can go down and get war master i've actually used rotos in clan boss he is very good he gets tons of turns um constantly hitting over 100k damage like multiple times so you can do like 300k damage like right away um without even without even using war master on him so i actually do did a lot of damage i'll show you the screenshot near the end when i talk about clan boss or i'll show you the screenshot right now of him and clan boss how much damage you can do i did an ultra nightmare run and i did a nightmare run so yeah that was with these masteries and these artifacts and without uh, war master so you can go for howl smasher if you want to use him in arena or you can also go for flawless execution for that 20 percent crit damage um howl smasher is better but this one is more reliable and we went for the defensive route because he I don't I don't think he needs any of the accuracies because Deku's defense his is not an AOE version so um, I don't really think he needs too much accuracy. Uh, that's not that's not really his role. His role is not to place Deku's defense. His role is to slay everybody. So I went down to get resistance, and I went all the way down to get retribution and also stubbornness. Increase the resistance by ten for each debuff on this champion. Stacks up to thirty. So those are the masteries. Um, I've I've told you guys some alternatives and you can switch things out based on how um, your team is set up. So we're going to go ahead and review him before we showcase him. So for Arena, he is a 5, definitely a 5. I just going to speak, he is a 5 because he has that block revive. Arena defense, he is a 5 as well. Campaign, he is able to farm campaign. Um, the thing is though, 
is he able to get multiple turns? Because AOE is always the way to go. So I'm going to give him a 4 because he's able to do it. But he is not a speed farmer because it's all random. Clan boss, I'll give him a 4 as well. He is very good. Dragon's Lair, I'm going to give him a 5. Because he does a lot of damage. Basically like Whisper, but stronger. That's how you should think about it. Minotaur's Labyrinth, he is a 5. Oh, they finally have Faction Wars on here. Faction Wars, he's definite 5. Magic Keep, he's a 5. Spirit Keep, he's a 5. Fire Knight's Castle, he is rated low for Fire Knight's Castle. But the thing is, he, if he if he's able to get extra turns, he can be very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give him a 3. Because we don't want to rely on randomness. Spatter's Den, I'm going to give him a 3. If you don't have anyone better, go use him. He doesn't have AoEs. Um, he doesn't really do much. So if he's going to be killing one of the Spiderlings, he's going to keep spawning more Spiderlings. So, I mean, he's able to do a lot of damage against her Spider Queen. But that's about it. Void Keep, he's going to be a 5. And Force Keep, I'll give him a 4 for Force Keep. So those are the ratings. I could, let's look at the recommend artifacts. So offense and crit rate, that is actually not bad. Uh, just basic sets. Crit rate primary, I would go with the crit damage instead. Attack percentage chest piece, that's correct. So yeah, this is not bad, but I would actually go with the crit, crit damage primary off uh, gauntlets here. So we're going to submit these ratings. Let's let the show begin. Oh, I actually managed to reach Platinum tier. Um, I can't hold defensively because everybody is very, very powerful in Platinum tier. You can see my battle log. Ever since I got a Platinum tier, I've been losing a lot of matches. And most of them are people who have Rotos or people who have crazy teams. So yeah, obviously we're going to be fighting strong teams now. So for those that complain that I never fight strong teams, you guys are going to be happy now. Uh, let's just refresh this list. So tell me to fight these, but this, <laughs> this is a showcase, okay? All right, so let's see what we got. Uh, we got this team down here. We might get... We, thing is, disclaimer, we might lose a lot of matches, but we're going to try our best to win. So let's do this. Yeah, so they go first. Okay, so the good news is Rotos is still alive. So what I want to do now is... I'm, I'm not going to be able to kill anybody, so what I want to do now is increase his max HP. So I'm going to go actually go after Ghostborn. He went to, he got a chance to go again. So we're actually going to go after Ghostborn again. Maybe we can slaughter him with one ability right here. There we go. Block revive. And now Arbiter can't revive him. So we don't have to bother with Arbiter at all. And now we're going to go after um, this guy. Ethos. So we did decrease his max HP. And we get to go again. We lost. <laughs> we don't lose. Well, he's dead. All right. We can bring him back to life. No worries. Ethos is so strong, man. Okay, so now it's his turn. So now we're going to kill him so that he doesn't come back to life. And then we get an extra turn. So you don't have to worry about wasting your turn on uh, that targets that have low HP. So he has to carry now because we don't have anybody to bring back to life. <laughs> to bring him back to life. So it's going to be uh, Tormin and Rotos against these two. Uh, I'm just going to go after Arbiter. No! <laughs> I think I should have got Chris, get rid of Chris earlier. So yeah, that is a loss. Uh, we're going to go after this team now. Oh, this team is pretty weak. Okay, so this does not really do a good job of showing how strong he is, but we're going to go against this team anyways. Alright, so we're going to actually try and kill Tormund one shot right away. We'll see if that works. Depends on if they build him with a lot of HP or not. Ah, uh, whatever. So I don't want to kill Harvest Jack because she's just going to bring him back to life. So I'm just going to hit 
Arbiter, hopefully we get an extra turn, there it is. And then now we can kill him. So we're gonna actually go kill Torment first, and we're gonna block his revive. There we go, so he's dead. We don't have to worry about him anymore. And we're gonna kill Arbiter, dead. Yeah, now we don't have to worry about anything, so we can just throw it on auto. So yeah, if you do have him with more attack and more crit damage, you can do way better than that. We're gonna go after this team. Um, they have more total power than me. They got an annoying Raglan, Krisk, and Valkyrie. They just have, have annoying team overall. Okay, so <laughs> thankfully Rotos is still alive. I want to try to kill Valkyrie. See, usually people build with a lot of defense, so maybe her HP is low enough to kill her. Nope. It's so weird, when I do it by myself, I might be able to kill all these guys, man. Just kill her. They're gonna bring her back to life. You know, Kriska's damage is not bad. I want to stack his HP. There we go. Um, yeah, let's go kill her now. Let's try this. He does, she does have ally protection. There it is. So we got the kill. Now we can increase our HP. Let's get rid of all these buffs. So I threw an R now, let's see what happens. There we go, block revive, 119,000 damage. And his HP is really high now. There we go, fight's over. So you can see like his, he doesn't hit too much. Like mine doesn't have too much, doesn't do too much damage, but he's very good. So I do wanna fight, uh, this team for Skullcrown, but Hegemon is a problem, man. Okay, we're gonna go against this team. We're gonna go against another Rotos. So 261,000 power. So if we don't get a victory, you don't get a victory. Let's try it out. This is probably gonna be the last arena fight that I do. And then we're gonna throw him into uh, Ice Golem. All right, so let's go after Duchess. Maybe we can kill her one shot. Sometimes we do, man. Sometimes we do. Trust me. <laughs> Sometimes we do get a one shot, just like that. <laughs> so his his rotos is way more damage than mine. So if you're not able to get a sub sass again, make sure that you um, use a cruel set instead. I actually might switch him to a cruel set because I think it might be better for arena. So we're not gonna go after rotos yet. We're gonna go after duchess. Hopefully he doesn't put a block revive on her. Okay, good. There we go, I can bring her back again. Oh. <laughs> That's how hard a Rotos can hit if he's built properly. All right, so I got my extra turn. Um, I don't think I can one-shot him, his Rotos, because I don't think I'm allowed to do so, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we're gonna go after, um, um, she's just gonna bring back Duchess, but we can't kill her anyway, so we might as well kill him. 
Yes, we got an extra turn. So now we're going to decrease her max HP and increase ours. That's a real Rotos right there. Okay, that's it. That's a loss. So I'm not editing any of that out. Just show you guys how brutal it is trying to get a Platinum tier or even if you get into Platinum. You know the weird thing is though, once you get into Platinum and get dropped down, you're still technically in Platinum. Which is kind of weird. So it's almost time for reset, so I don't want the game to start glitching out. So what we're going to do showcase him in um, Ice Golem's Peak. Because I feel like that's the best dungeon that he's good in. I mean, he is good in Dragon, but Dragon's the easiest dungeon. Ice Golem, sometimes people have a problem with it. So this is the team I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you the first wave. Second wave, we're going to skip it, and then we're going to go to the Ice Golem. Because I don't want the video to be too long. So again, make sure you guys build him with a Cruel Set if you don't have good Relentless Artifacts. I actually might switch into uh, a better Cruel Set. Uh, later on not right now, but I kind of like him in relentless Because sometimes when he when he procs it, it is crazy A few moments later All right, so we made it one minute in and we made it to the ice golem So his job is supposed to be to kill the ads So if you can kill the ads with his block revive ability this fight is so easy man Like the fight goes by way way faster so that's what you gotta do. It's kind of harder to do on auto, but he should be able to do it. And the cool thing is his his ability does not work uh, against the bosses, right? It doesn't decrease their max HP, but he's able to do so for the ads. And then in doing so, he's able to increase his max HP by up to up to 60,000, which is crazy. Against the boss, I think it's only 15. Don't kill him. Oh my god. Okay, kill this guy, Rotos. Kill him. There we go. So block revives placed on him. He can't come back. And then when the next one comes back, we should be able to kill him. So that's the cool thing is that his ma decreased max HP will make it easier for him uh, to do his block revive when they come back to life. And then he's going to be very hard to kill. His HP is like through the roof. Plarium needs a way for us to see their HP. Like if I, click, if I click info, it should show their stats here during the fight with the buffs and everything. I want to get that block revive off. 143,000 damage. Like this guy can easily hit 200,000, over 200,000 damage if he's built with higher attack. There we go, block revive is placed, and now it's time to start dishing out the damage. So there we go, consecutive turns again. So he did 2.4 million damage. That is crazy. <laughs> I don't know how many times I said crazy, but it's crazy. Amazing. He actually out damaged Ray. And the last thing we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna do it. We're going to go ahead and showcase him in uh, Dragon's Lair. And we're just going to skip to the dragon and see how he does. So we're going to go throw in Roto. So Royal Guard, Roto, so another Royal Guard. Um, Ray and Duchess Lilla too. Let's do it. And we're skipping straight to the dragon. Don't worry about the waves. All right. So one minute, 21 seconds to get the dragon. Now the fight should be um, faster. Three turns. <laughs> Jinxed it, man. I just I shouldn't even talk.
All right, so two minutes, 11 seconds. He did 1.1 million damage. This Royal Guard did 1.2 million. But the thing is, Royal Guard does AOE damage. Ray, oh, what happened to you, Ray? Not enough people to kill. All right, so before we end this video, I want to go over um, Siffy. I want to talk about how the synergy between him and Siffy, the Lost Bride. So there's him. So their synergy is pretty crazy because if she's on the same team as him, he receives 30% less damage from bosses. And if his HP is through the roof, that's going to be crazy. Especially in Ice Golem. Uh, what their synergy has with Siffy's kit is that so she basically heals each ally by 15% of their max HP at the start of their turn, right? So 15% of their max HP is crazy for Roto. So he's always going to be healing a crazy amount. And she has a 40% chance of removing freeze and fear debuffs from each ally at the start of their turn, not including Roto. So Roto's automatically gets removes old debuffs from Roto's at the start of their turn if they're on the same team. So that is amazing. So she basically just ignores Tormund or ignores Harvest Jack. Uh, basically any debuff, she just ignores it. So when Roto's gets his turn, they're basically off of him, which is amazing. But that's going to be hard to do. Getting Siffy and Roto's together is hard to do. I have a feeling, you guys heard it here first, I have a feeling that Siffy is going to be an extreme fusion, just like how Brachus was. That is my feeling. So yeah, Rotos is amazing. If you guys are able to get him, get Rotos. This guy's a 10 out of 10 champion. Um, he's like the next level of uh, power creep. So we don't have, we haven't had that in this game yet. And this is the first time we had it. So with Rotos and Siffy, um, it is crazy, crazy. So the game is taking a new direction with zero content. <laughs> like what content do I need to beat with this, guys? <laughs> I mean, I can decrease my time and Ice Golem's Peak, but I, I already, I can already beat Ice Golem's Peak with a regular team. It doesn't matter how fast I beat it if I'm using Auto Clicker. Well, yeah, that's besides the point. That's something else. So that was the guide for Rotos. If you guys found this guide and this video helpful or entertaining in any way, make sure you guys drop a like. It helps me out a lot. And if you guys are new to the channel and you'd like to see, then consider subscribing. Before we end the video, a word from Tyrone. I'm Tyrone. I need everybody to subscribe to the homie Ali Al Plays. And that's non-negotiable.